it's that time of the week again and we're back as usual with more stories from the world of art, music and cultural heritage. Welcome to Colors of India. Let's quickly go over the main stories this week. The Katha in Kathakali Parvati Baul's Sangeet And finally, Kathak by Shobhna Narayan dance drama Kadagali started off in the 16th century taking inspiration from Kudiyatam, a much older Sanskrit dance drama form. At the World Dance Day celebration organized by Indratya Vriksha, Kadagali was the main highlight. While deeply rooted in Hindu mythology, the classical dance drama Kathagali combines the presence of literature, music, painting, acting and dance. Kathagali pale valare vasangal aitu nelen nelen kundan gilem. Pandat thedal dinum uri kal eda kalengal le thedu gorche shorshi jirno. Adani sheesham idu pale pale kathagali clubbegal aitum. Avade adin thena katha audience ne parnyu gorte. Avare valde ni manan vanisla ki satisfaction oru gudi downer thirchuvar. Thanne vala inni pa pudiya pudiya Abraham de Belli. Thane oru vada Christia kathagalay Shakespeare de Shakespeare na Mac badda vadallo. Anggalah kata kalau beri mandor anda. The color of the makeup on the artist's face determines the character that is being portrayed. The two Veshams or characters that took to stage were Pacha and Minaka. Pacha, which means green, is used to portray noble characters while Minaka is for female characters. from Kerala and I did Kathakali when I was young so I never miss a performance. I love to see young people performing so well because uh, so many traditions are being lost that when young people take it up and put their heart and soul it's very heartwarming. Kalamandalam Amaljit and his troupe presented a portion from the Dakshayagam in the Bhagavata Puranam written by Iraiman Tambi. King Daksha and his wife are introduced in an amorous scene at the bank of River Yamuna. It is then that they come across a conch shell inside which is a beautiful girl. I thought even the girl was very good. You know, in our time when I learnt, uh, we were the first 
my cousin who is a girl also took the male part and I otherwise or even male just to always do the female part but now changes have come and Kathakali is in fact adopted a lot of stories from other parts of the world and they are very innovative while keeping their tradition. The Punani or the lead singer was accompanied by the Shingri or his follower and the use of traditional instruments like the Chenda, Maddalam and Ilatalam added to the magic of the evening. It's now time for us to take a small break on Colors of India. Don't go anywhere because we're back in less than a minute. Coming up, Bengal's Bhakti Sangeet, Baul and Shovna Narayan's Kathak. Welcome back. For the past one year, the cultural scene in India has been alive with so many Tagore-centric programs as part of the 150th birth anniversary of the Great Guru. Not to be left behind, the Global Cultural Foundation also put up a show which was in honour of this occasion. Everyone has heard about Rabindra Sangeet. But this evening, dedicated to Tagore had more to do with it than just that. Tagore's works have been featured on the silver screen but is often hidden in obscurity. Many of his original compositions have been adopted into Hindi cinema as well. Somebody told me that number of good tunes which were written, which was composed by Tagore, he was not only a poet, he was a great music composer also. Those tunes have been adopted in Bollywood. Then we did a research work and we found number of beautiful numbers. I said, why not do this kind of a work that half song will be sung in Bengali and half in Hindi Bollywood number. Several music composers were also inspired by his compositions. There have been many songs over the years which remind us of the poet's works. Monerobe Kinarobe Amare, the Hindi version of which, Wo Bachpan Ka Din, was also recalled here. Music was shadowed by a dance drama called Radha Ki Abhilasha. This piece was based on Tagore's Bhanu Shingir Padaboli or Radha Krishna's Love Lore. The dance drama depicted Radha on her secret love adventure seeking her beloved Shyam. Particular this songs which he has written Tagore when he was nine year old. That was the first he wrote first poetry in Bhanushingir Padavali. So those songs call this is his pseudonym, Bhanushingho. 
So he used to, and see, when he was 16 year old, then it recognized as Bhanu Shingir Padabali. Fear does not stop her and she enjoys taking the risks in her daring pursuit. The choreography was based on Odissi, Manipuri and Bharatanatyam dance forms. The evening imprinted that Tagore's music is contemporary and his creation continues to stay in vogue despite the change in time. When you think of it, it's astonishing how so many of Tagore's compositions have made it to the silver screen. Now, Tagore himself was greatly influenced by the musical tradition of Baul. And up next, we have for you that. Adorning a simple saffron sari with just the ektara and dugi as her accompaniments, Parvati Baul used her voice to crack the silence of the crowd at the Bhakti Sangeet festival in Nehru Park. She learned the art of singing, dancing and storytelling from Shanti Niketan. Because these poems are coming uh, from the deep experience and realization of the masters. And uh, if one meditate on these poems for many years, one is able to um, grow spiritually inside. So maybe that is, that is what inspires me in Baul. <laughs> The word Baul originates from the Sanskrit word Vatula. Their history dates back to the 15th century. As the evening descended, Parvati invoked the Bhakti spirit through her song Janamo Morono, giving the message that one is born only to die and one dies only to be born again. with dancing and singing plus you're completely alone yourself many singers they don't like to take that risk because it's a risk you are just opening yourself taking anything risk that comes to you so uh, but this is the way of you know turning the music into a spiritual practice through because this will bring a lot of uh, prana shakti in the body Her next song was about the journey of the mind and the other was about the love Radha has for Krishna. Her songs had elements of Sufism, Vaishnavism and Buddhism and many in the audience were enthralled by her spirituality and sang along with her 
as if seeking liberation. It takes you to your roots. Very basic. She just got one string instrument and a little drum on the side. And she keeps you engaged with that, with her movements all around. It was really beautiful. We did not understand the language at all, but uh, we could uh, definitely get the message. You know, it was full of uh, love and devotion. Baul uses Bangla as a language of expression. But to communicate the message of spirituality to a larger audience, Parvati has given Baul traditions a fresh twist by painting Chitrakata Geeti, where the songs have painted imageries that makes understanding easier. Through her songs, Parvati Baul is able to communicate the message of selfless bhakti. It is here that we go on a tiny break. Colors of India will return in a jiffy. Coming up, music and dance by the maestros. Welcome back. The musical legacy of Maharaja Swati Tirunal was remembered and honoured in a Carnatic music concert organised in his honour. It was a celebration of the 199th birth anniversary of Maharaja Swati Tirunal of Travancore. Prince Rama Varma, an ace Carnatic singer and also a direct descendant of Maharaja Swati Tirunal, paid homage to the singing great through this musical recital. Prince Varma began by singing Deva Deva in Maya Malava Gaula Raga. He remains one of the very, very few people who handled Carnatic music as well as Hindustani music with equal ease. So he is composed in Hindustani, Hindi and Braj Bhasha also. And this is just a one hour concert. Actually, it will take a week to cover all aspects of this very great composer. So I've just sung a few Carnatic style compositions of Maharaja Swaritharanath. Like in Drupad, Carnatic music gives importance to fixed compositions and Maharaja Swati Tirunal is said to have left a legacy of as many as 300 compositions. But with time, understanding and the attention span of the audience being a key issue, singers today perform fleeting compositions of popular tunes. Earlier, we had um, 
more similarities between Dhrupad singing and Carnatic music. We had this big alap and jod chala, exactly like that we have something called ragam, which is alap, and uh, tanam, which is uh, jod, and jhala, which is a composition. But the difference between Hindustani and Carnatic, one of the main things is that we have a very great importance to fixed compositions. <laughs> Prince Varma's music is noted for its strict adherence to tradition coupled with his own charming brand of creativity. The blending of the beauty and devotional elements made the evening extraordinary and even divine. This royal legacy definitely lives on thanks to present day singers like Prince Varma. Similarly, Kathak is a tradition that is also living because of the gurus who are willing to impart this knowledge to the budding generation. As part of World Dance Day, the Air Force Bhal Bharti School conducted a dance appreciation program. Pandit Birju Maharaj's best known disciple, Shobhna Narayan, felicitated the occasion, teaching the children the meaning and elegance of this Indian classical dance form. is even predates the Natya Shastra, the earliest reference being 4th century before Christ. So for the last 2,500 years, it has been there weathering all storms and yet it is very much there alive and kicking. Kathak means to tell a story and this technique of storytelling was evident in the way Shovna presented the themes of nature to these students. Through her dance, she portrayed different animals like the elephant, snake and the beautiful peacock in elegant yet simple means. Student, they, they have a little bit aptitude towards uh, Western and all these things. Uh, they are igno ignoring our culture. So when we have these sort of, you can say, functions uh, in our the school, so it is sort of encouragement, motivation uh, from the school side. So at least they should know what basic things are there. The students were left mesmerized by her depiction of the scene from the Mahabharata, especially the dice game and the Draupadi Cheer Haran. Accompanying her were Ustad Shakil Ahmed Khan on the tabla, Pandit Vijay Sharma on the sitar and Sri Madhu Prasad on the vocals. She had shown us lightning, she had also shown her foot movements, uh, how she could show anger through her foot and how she could please a person through that. Shobhna also presented Lord Shiva's Dhamrunath, which enchanted the students. Though she maintained the traditional style, she made sure that the students could understand and therefore appreciate this art form. It goes with 
without saying that the kids did enjoy the show and their interaction with the artist. Now that's all we have time for you on this week's episode of Colors of India. Do stay in touch via our Facebook page and until we meet again next week, goodbye and have a lovely week ahead.